Hi everyone, my name's Michelle and I'm Mama Loves You GB here on FlossTube, but also on Instagram and Etsy as well. Welcome to the Sunday morning briefing. I'm back after being to the retreat and I'm totally discombobulated. <laughs> this is why I do a FlossTube every week. Uh, it's partly a selfish reason, it's because I can't remember from week to week what I've been doing. So I've just spent the last sort of 40 minutes going around the house, gradually like picking bits of crostage up for where I've sort of spread a fine layer all over the house in the last few weeks. Um, I've got so much to tell you about the retreat, about hall, about stitchy kindness. I've, I've literally been left unattended for two weeks. Um, I will tell you about the retreat in just a second. I want to show you a couple of finishes first, um, which is probably going to annoy my best friend. Um, she's not a stitcher, but she did say she would tune in to see how the retreat had gone. But the most she'd managed of one of my videos so far was about eight minutes. So, uh, Lindsay, you're going to have to dig in a little bit and see if you can just push it a little bit. <laughs> um, if you notice my hands today, they might look a little strange coloured. I've been It's pickling season, so I've been preparing pickling onions all today. Um, I haven't used any of the uh, skins to dye with this time yet, but I think I may do. I bought a 10 kilo bag and I think I'm probably about four kilos in. So I may do some more dyeing with the onion skins again. Um, we went to see uh, Hasey Dixie last night as well. That was amazing. If you've never seen them before, they are amazing. They, they're like um, oh, a country bluegrass rock band. They do a lot of covers, uh, very famous songs with a mandolin, a banjo and a couple of guitars. Um, and there was a lot of beards there. There was a lot of people in dungarees. It was fabulous. I had an amazing time. And then today we went up to uh, Casa Kentless, which is the Iron Age fort. Um, you may remember on the BBC a few years ago, they did a, um, a program about living on an Iron Age fort and that was filmed just up there. And it absolutely held it down. Proper Welsh horizontal rain. So hence why my hair looks a little bit like it got wet, because it did. And my trousers and my coat and everything else. So I'm going to show you a couple of finishes first before I go on to the bulk of my stitching which either happened at the retreat or has happened since the retreat. The first thing I finished last week was a stitch along that I started and finished which is a new thing for me um, and this is by Colleen who is Rebel Stitcher and this is Una's Urn. So it was hashtag Una's Urn Sal. Now you can still join on to this if you want to. This uh, is a PDF that I downloaded from her website, which is rebelstitcherdesigns.com. Or is it just rebelstitcher.com? I'll put it down below. I'll put it down below. There's going to be loads of information down below, so do check it out. And this is my finish. Now this is the only one that I haven't ironed, mainly because until about five minutes before I started I hadn't located it <laughs> because it was pre-retreat um, there's quite a lot of organization in my house that took place pre-retreat i.e I chucked everything in a box and then there's a lot of stuff that's happened post-retreat so anyway this is my finish so it would look better without the massive fold lines down it I agree let's go there so it's a piece of fabric that I hand dyed it is a piece of even weave Pardon me. It is a piece of even weave and I dyed it with um, walnut dye and I used a spray to dye it. And this is actually the back. This is the front colour. But I decided I preferred the back. And you can see the little pumpkin there with the face and then the skulls and the sort of flowers that look like eyeballs. I chose colours that... Um, were similar to the pattern because I didn't have them on I was just keen to stitch it. I really quite fancy finishing it in a frame in an oval frame uh, so I'm going to have a look and see if I can dig out my oval frame that I had. And the other thing that I finished this week is not stitching actually it's a little bit of sewing. <laughs> I finished a little bit of sewing um, and it is some Halloween bunting. Now I bought on a stash unload some bunting panels 
and I got such a good price on them I actually used the bunting panels front and back now normally I'd probably only use the bunting panels for the front um, and use plain on the back but they were such a good price that I just bought I just used them I use, just used the, the panels for the front and the back so I've got three of these strings I'll just show you the front and back of this one because I probably have managed to do use all of them on each one. I tried to spread them out. There we go. I'll put the name of the fabric down below because I'll have to look it up. I think it might be a Riley Blake one, but I'm not 100% sure. So I've got three three strings. Of bunting each have got nine nine of the pieces of bunting on and I really enjoyed making that it was really really good fun <laughs> just in time for Halloween I don't know why I'm folding that up I shall just throw it casually onto the floor there we go and the rest of them but that was good fun sorry about that I just had another coffee then. <laughs> nobody can get really well this holiday it's not Covid um, I've just done the test just because I've had a headache for about two weeks now and I just finally thought oh, do you know what? I'm gonna test again I tested before I went on the retreat I thought I'm just gonna test again I think it's just end of term my brain and head are too heavy anyway the retreat the most amazing weekend I can see why people love retreats and get really addicted to retreats. so this was my my first one it was um Stitch in London and it was run by Marie who is Stitches and Diamonds on YouTube and also on Instagram so if you are interested in thinking about the 2023 retreat when I finish speaking about it um if you make sure you follow her on Instagram and on YouTube then I'm sure that'll be the first place that she divulges the information out to the to the rest of the world I know she's already in talks with the hotel that we stayed at to book again because the hotel was really really good it was really good for exactly what Marie wanted it for Marie wanted to have a retreat which you paid for and then you paid for your room and then you had a lot of flexibility about what you did surrounding your food in fact you didn't even have to book the room um, and that's why she chose to have it in London because it had such good links um, transport links there was a lot of people actually who arrived in the morning and then went home again at night because that's what suited them so she'd wanted a retreat that didn't necessarily have the huge costs that can be associated with staying in a hotel having meals and all those sorts of things so we had the retreat we we paid for the retreat um, and then you could book a hotel if you wanted to and then your meals there was a Sainsbury's within about five minutes walking distance so at lunchtime some people walked up to Sainsbury's and just got a sandwich you there was a little cafe in the hotel um, some people managed to get Deliveroo um, I wasn't one of those people I really tried I really tried to get Deliveroo to the hotel but I think the I, I think the app realized that I live rurally and I've never ever used Deliveroo before I just could not get it to work and despite the best efforts of everybody on my table we could just not get <laughs> Deliveroo to work for me um, and so yeah I ended up eating in the hotel on the Saturday night but the breakfast was lovely I did stay because obviously it was a little bit far for me um, the breakfast was lovely couldn't couldn't fault the hotel the stitching room was great the light was really really great in there as well and you could come and go as you please Marie had published a, a timetable of events um, you know these are the key times when things are happening you might want to make sure you're you're in the stitchy room for that but other than that it was a case of maybe you want to go and get a drink maybe you want to sit outside in the in the lobby for a little bit get a bit of fresh air it was brilliant really really good so I arrived on the Saturday morning um, and all the tables were pretty much set up um, because lots of people had arrived on the Friday and I walked in, got a, got a seat at a lovely table. Um, so on our, my table were Katie, Nicole, uh, Libby, Claire and Leanne. Um, and we just had a great time just chatting backwards and forwards. It was really, really good. 
Um, and I went round and spoke to different people on other tables and lots of people came over to talk to me, which was lovely because I'm not always the best at kind of going over and saying hi. So it was lovely that some people came over and just said hi and introduced themselves and things like that. So that was really, really nice. Um, we got two charts, one of which was kitted up. Well, I think there's, to be honest, I think there's enough fabric for and floss for the second one as well. Um, finishing materials, we were asked a few weeks ago which count we wanted, what sort of finish we wanted to do, whether we wanted to do a flat fold or a, a pillow finish. Um, we got, there was loads of raffles, there was loads of door prizes, all sorts of other things. Um, Marie was just fabulous all the way through. There was a great quiz. Um, I'll never forget the, the name of DMC666 again. <laughs> <laughs> that was one of the questions. What is the name of DMC666? I'll put it along the bottom just in case you're you're um, playing along. Um, what else was the name? What was the name of the tower that Big Ben is in? I didn't know that one. I do now. A um, few questions about London, a few questions about stitching and Zweigart. It was really good fun. Really good fun. And actually Hannah won. Um, so Hannah is... Uh, a stitcher works at uh, UCL. She is a curator and she's got a few designs out on Gumroad as well. I'll put her um, information down below because her designs are really, really good. She's got some designs to do with Beatles and to do with Charles Darwin as well. Um, I love Charles Darwin. Anyway, I digress, which I probably will do lots and lots of times. So, um, what I'll do actually is I'll try and have a look on the Stitch in London hashtag and maybe just see if I can pinch somebody's picture of their finish because I've just started mine um, and I on the actual chart it does say about um, not sharing the chart with anyone in full or partial on social media so I don't even want to kind of flash it up because there's not a, a full picture of it so I'll try and see if I can pinch a couple of pictures um, that are on Instagram to show you what the, the finishes look like. I'll show you where I've got to on mine and no nope, not that one where is it there it is that's where I've got to on mine I didn't actually start it at the retreat I started it today just had a sudden uh, pang of wanting to start my retreat piece because <laughs> it's a week ago and I've still got the retreat blues and where were we this was all the floss all on floss cards for us and some trim and here was the rest of my finishing materials because I'd said about I wanted to do a flat fold so that's what I've got some card some um, felt another piece of card some tartan and some some trim so I shall be as soon as I finish mine I shall be finishing that up so I told you I was going to get discombobulated because because I wasn't going to show you that until a bit later because I only started it today. But that was our retreat project, um, or projects. Let me put that down out of the way. The floor around here is going to be terrible when I've finished. Marie's husband was there the whole two days. And um, I was watching Yasmin's Made With Love, who I also met, who is delightful. She's so much fun. Um, and she said on her video that she was like, I thought my husband was pretty supportive of my stitching, but he needs to step his game up. Marie's husband was really good. <laughs> and he was, he was fabulous. So uh, kudos to him and obviously to Marie, as I've already said. Who else did I meet? Now I'm gonna have to look at my list. Now I, I even thought twice about making a list because I know there'll be some people that I haven't mentioned that I met. Um, and I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry there will be some people I know that I've forgotten but it was a case of I I just I just wanted to mention a few people that I met um so I've mentioned Hannah 
I met, met Chloe Wood, who is Girl with the Gavel Stitches, who I've shown a few of her charts before now and spoken about her a little bit. And I think we did a giveaway with one of her charts as well. So um, I met her, she's, she's super nice. Everyone was super nice. I've never seen a room of such nice people. It was great. I met Crafting Kirsty, uh, Ros Clark, um, who designed the other stitching pattern. I should have said actually Yasmin designed the first one, the one with the little guardsman, and Ros Clark designed the second one, the Union Jack one. I met Kelly from Crossford Rise Stitchery. Uh, I met Yasmin as I said. Um, I met Ruthie from Crow's Feet Stitching, who we've done lots of before and she sent me charts and we've done lots of giveaways before and she had an absolute blast as well. I know she had a really, really successful retreat. Um, oh, Kerry and Caroline. Uh, Kerry is Leo and Roxy and Caroline is Evertotes. They were both absolutely fantastic, such, such nice people. And their friend, Laurie, um, who is uh, my crazy life my crazy life lorry I'll put it along the bottom uh, and she was absolutely lovely too she was hilarious had had a really really good time with them um who else did I meet Justine I met Justine who I've seen before who I've spoken with before and conversed with before um Julie Hazel so many people and I know that I would have forgotten people Valerie um names will come to me as I as I talk right what else did I stitch at the retreat then? So I took a few things that I thought I know I'll be able to stitch on perhaps without too much, too much fuss. So the first thing I took, I actually finished um, and it was the Redwork Pears. So I'd started off with this one um, and I'm stitching it on Fox and Rabbit 36 Count Desert Taipan using a sulky thread. And there is my finish. So that's the first one. And I've got enough fabric to do the other two. And this is my backing fabric. So this is the fabric that I'm going to use, which I bought at Abacan's a couple of weeks ago, which I think I've already showed you. Hence why I picked out the red, let's take the sticker off it, that I picked out because it's the same colour red, it really goes with that. And I do like stitching with Sulky on 36 count. So I finished that, that was a little kind of settler project, although <laughs> I really struggled and I didn't, I don't know, I didn't know this was a problem for me. Um, stitching on 36 count and normally when I'm stitching I'm stitching on 36 count and I've probably got my phone right next to me and I'm watching floss tube or something similar but when you're stitching at a table with somebody if somebody's speaking you like you look up and then look back down and I found it really hard keep changing my focal distance <laughs> so um, I have actually booked an eye test for next week <laughs> just because that might be the source of my headache as well um, but yeah, because I when I stitch, I normally have my phone right next to me, so I don't have to keep changing my focal distance. And I am conscious of a comment that I had a few weeks ago saying, Michelle's excited, she's speaking really quickly, so I will try and slow down a little bit. But there we go. So that was my first thing, and I finished that. So it was nice to have a finish at the retreat. Then, what else did I stitch on? I took along something that I'd started um, and I'd started this in order of uh, Yasmin's birthday and I knew she was going to be there so I thought well that'd be nice to take and I'd stitched the outline of quite a bit so I knew that I had in a good bit of filling to do and that any counting that was it was quite easy so this is Miss Coffee by Barbara Anna so I'd stitched that. Can I have put her face in? I couldn't see by looking in the camera whether I'd actually put her face in, but I have. I've put the skin tone in. Now the thing I have noticed that I've done is she's supposed to have white arms and then skin tone hands 
and mine's going to have skin tone hands and white gloves. But that's just the way it's going to be. So this is stitched using the kit fabric and the kit floss which comes from Nitka Moscow. It is a DMC floss and the fabric I'm not entirely sure. I think it's a Zweigart fabric. I think it's probably something like raw or flax or something like that. But I enjoyed stitching on that. So I've got quite a lot of, there's a big, if you have not seen the design before, or I haven't put a picture up, there's a big sort of circle around her. Most of it's filled in in that lovely purple color. So that's gonna take a little while. It's no surprise that Yasmin chose a Barbara Anna for her birthday stitch because she's a big Barbara Anna fan. She was telling me she actually she thinks she may have overcommitted on the Barbara Anna stars. <laughs> and then I had a start myself. I had taken this one, the blue flower, the magpie and the moon. And I'd taken my threads, which were um, not the called for, but just similar colours to the chart. And I'd taken the fox and rabbit fabric of the month, which was called turquoise. And it's a 36 count. This time I'm stitching with one thread over two. And this is where I've gotten to on that. Now the yellow, not the yellow, the white <laughs> isn't showing up terribly well on this but it does in real life. And this green is a cottage garden thread and it's really lovely. So yeah, the light's a bit funny in here tonight, but it is showing up. It does show up much better than that in real life. I really enjoyed stitching that. I took that with me to swim in the other night and did a bit more. And the last thing that I stitched on was one of my Santas. As you can see, I've left a thread hanging. So this is the third that I've stitched in a series which came from um, Just Cross Stitch magazine, November to December 2011. And they always look really spooky until I put the eyes in. Really, really spooky. So I think most of what I did was putting in this bat on here. But this sort of project is a bit too counting, counting, a bit too count heavy for a retreat, I think. It's a bit too hard to keep counting and making sure you're in the right place. You need simple things for a retreat, I think. So keep talking about the retreat. I've stitched on a couple of things since. Um, I'm going to show you those in a minute. I'm going to show you my stitchy kindness from the retreat because I was very lucky that some people had brought things especially for me um, and also I was um, amazed by you know you'd go out and uh, to go and get a drink or a cup of tea or something like that and when you come back in your place there'd be like a little gift that everybody had had it was amazing I took gifts for my table um, but I wish I'd taken more little bits and bobs to give away um, so definitely for next time I will think about that so a couple of things that I'm really sorry, but I don't know who, these are the sort of things that appeared on the table. So a little Union Jack needle minder, which I think I'm gonna put onto my Stitch London finish and somehow just to display it. And then this lovely needle minder the back of which is stuck to something else. There it is. Now stuck to the front. There we go. I don't know how well this is going to show because it's really shiny, but it's a little girl stitching. But the the finish of the print is almost like holographic in some places. There, you can kind of see. It's so lovely. And there's a lady who went round and gave them these out, and I'm really sorry I didn't catch her name. I got some floss drops from Elaine, who was sat on the table with Justine and a few others. Lovely Dalmatian, that's not a Dalmatian, 
that's a dash end, <laughs> lovely down um, dash end. And she was working on sweater weather as well, the Plum Street Sampler sweater weather, which I've seen obviously the chart before, but I've never seen anyone stitching it. And it sort of has gone onto my list of things that I want to stitch now. That is the trouble with a retreat. You end up getting so many things on your stitch list. Like for example, I've never been one to want to stitch a mirabilia, but there was a lady who had the, the most beautiful mirabilias that she was, in fact there was two, one lady had finished one and one lady was working on one and they just looked amazing. And I've got Snow Queen by Mirabilia and I got it because I liked it. And I, it's one of those ones that I'll, I'm sure I'll stitch it one day, but I've actually written down all the threads. So I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna actually uh, kid it up. And it was the same with another Barbara Anna. There was a lady who was actually sat just behind me. Hannah, I think her name was, no. Hannah, yeah, I'm sure it was Hannah. Um, who was stitching the new Barbara Anna, the one that's the Mad Hatter. And it looked amazing. So again, I've written down all the threads for those, ready to water those. Um, this came from Laurie. And inside it had, ah, there we go, My Crazy Life. That's her information. And she does videos um, and all sorts of different blogs and things like that. So she's, she's very cool. She'd included some Stitch in London uh, floss drops, a little ring and a little bulb pin with all sorts of different charms on it to put onto projects, which is really cool. And this cool lotion bar. Now I'm pretty sure, <laughs> I've been putting it on my hands. I'm pretty sure it's for hands, not for floss. Cause it's orange and honey scented. So I'm pretty sure it's for hands. I'm, it, I think it's one of those um, ones which are like a solid, a solid hand hand lotion, which I guess is why it says lotion bar on it. Got the dropsies again. <laughs> right, what else? This came from Susan, who is the blue crab stitcher. There we go. And she was sat on a different table, but literally right behind me. So she had made oops, these lovely floss rings with the ring bling. Like I said many times, I can never remember what these things are called, I'm sticking with ring bling. And then Kerry from Leo and Roxy Floss had gone round and put a floss on everyone's table, which was lovely. And she brought me some other special gifts, which I'll show you in a minute. Julie had given me a pair of scissors. Stay tuned, Julie, I've got something for you. There we go. And then a lovely lady, Hazel, came up to me. Oh, I'm gonna have to reach for this. And she gave me this whole big bag of things that she'd made for me and for Ness. So, lovely card. She'd made a project bag, a winter project bag with a little ring on there that she'd all made herself. Uh, I'm gonna have to put this on the floor down here. Then she'd given me, now this had, this was tied with a, a little ring. So this is a, a lovely little fabric bag. And inside it, we've got bookmark, pin cushion, stitched ornament for the tree. It's all beautifully, beautifully made. Uh, what have we got in here? Ooh. Pop those down there. Um, an oort, <clears throat> oort catcher with some lovely buttons on. And a scissor fob with a snowman on the end. Is that everything in there? In fact, I'm going to attach a scissor fob. 
to my scissors. And then for Ness, she'd made a, this beautiful bag that she can hang in her bedroom. Now I have shown this to Ness. And I showed it to her when I got back. And then I was like, right, give it back. <laughs> I, I need to show that on my channel. And she's like, oh, when can I have it back? Sunday, you can have it back on Sunday. <laughs> I literally showed it to her. She was looking at it, she was loving it, all her stuff. And I was like, right, give it back. I need it back. <laughs> Don't be losing any of that. <laughs> and then she had a bag as well. And inside she had a bookmark as well and she loves her bookmarks she, she really does we're at the stage of reading like bigger books now we don't tend to spend too much time with kind of picture books um and so we're doing a lot of roll doll reading the witches at the moment and so bookmarks are amazing another little ornament for the tree she gave her a pen some post-it notes now if you know anything about a six-year-old a pen and post-it notes that is, well, my six-year-old anyway. She's stationary mad. And I've no idea if she gets it wrong at all. And some of these bulldog clips. Now, she's very lucky that I have just bought a big bag of those bulldog clips for school. Otherwise, she would not be having those. Because those are my favourite clips. Paper clips are useless. You need those bulldog clips. So, all of those things, I was just absolutely blown away and she was such such a lovely lady such a lovely lady and then from Kerry who is um, Leo and Roxy Floss all the way from Canada now I had <laughs> this well I think this is a funny story I was chatting with Kerry um, about a year in the woods and she'd messaged me to ask me what kind of floss she, not not floss what kind of fabric I thought what colour would suit because she wanted to stitch them all as one and we went back and forward and I was having real trouble actually describing the colour of fabric that I thought it would look really good on um, and so I just said to her look should I just dye you a piece I'll, I'll just dye you a piece what count do you want so she told me what count she want and I dyed her a piece and sent it off and she loved it and then <laughs> it kind of hit me I was like You've just offered to dye probably one of the best dyers in North America a piece of fabric. <laughs> she could dye her own, but she did love it. Um, and so she brought me this bag with all this cool stuff in it. So it's a seaside bag, salty but sweet. Yeah, I think that's probably me, salty but sweet. And then inside there is... Um, Leo and Roxy floss which I cannot wait to use beautiful colours and then this lovely lovely ring bling with an owl on it and then she gave me this piece of fabric that's the inside of the bag there she gave me this piece of fabric which is a 40 count and I believe it's called Pantone, Pantone. Isn't that lovely? Look at those colours. Amazing. Thank you so much, Kerry. <laughs> I was oh, I was just blown away. Blown away by everybody's kindness and I've got real blues. Retreat blues. And uh, we at the end of the um, retreat Marie asked us to fill out a form about our experiences and anything that she could do to make it better. Um, and I didn't put anything on that part because I thought she'd done a fabulous job. But I decided, Marie, there is something that you can do to make it better. What I would like next year is uh, a written note from you for my head that says I can have a week off afterwards. <laughs> oh, because it was so brilliant, but I was so tired, but I was so like, I just want to stitch this, I want to dye this, I want to make this, and I, and I had to go to work. How does that work so yeah if, if next year Marie you could arrange that with my my head that'd be fabulous and that would make everything perfect but seriously if you get a chance to go you need to go so what have I done since I came home that is a good question I've probably stitched a little bit more on Miss Coffee and the magpie I've probably 
I've not had that much time this week. It's been a really, really busy week. We've had parents' evenings. Um, I've probably had a meeting most days after school. It's just been crazy time. We've got one more week before half term. I know a lot of the English schools are on half term next week, but we've got one more week. I've also stitched on my stitch along from Tiny Modernist, which is the Halloween crystal ball. And I've started to put in the background there, which is going to have like a haunted house on it. And I've put in the fence. And this is on a piece of 32 count fabric that I hand dyed myself. It's the same piece of fabric actually that has got my Not Forgotten Farm piece on it, which I need to finish as well. There we go. Right, what have I got left? Haul and plans. Now, I don't actually have a lot of haul from the retreat, mainly because A, I felt so spoilt anyway. Um, B, Ruthie was there with her charts from Crow's Feet Stitchery, which were amazing. But again, I was so lucky that she'd sent me those charts um, already. There was coffee, Megan Coffee with her fabrics, um, and I was really tempted by some of them, but I literally, I've literally just ordered probably about two metres of 36 count and two metres of um, 32 count white Zweigart just to do some more dyeing on. So I was very, very tempted, but very sensible because I was like, you're just, you're just gonna end up dyeing some more of your own, so leave it. <laughs> walk away even though it was so beautiful but I did get some good ideas for colour combinations. Um, I had bought before I went to the retreat, let me just find this, um, this is from Pauline and she is the lady who makes the bags that I showed two weeks ago so she sent me this one which is beautiful and made with blackbird fabrics and then she had this one for sale so I bought this one from her I'll put the name of the um, Instagram along the bottom I think I know what it is but I'm frightened to say it wrong I'd rather you had the right information so I'll put the name across the bottom and then she also sent in there a couple of little freebie charts so nice nice card and also she sent me Summer Tide Blessings by Plum Street Samplers and Maxim and Zoya, which I've looked at buying several times before, by again, by Plum Street Samplers. So thank you so much for those, Pauline. I can't wait to stitch those. Right, freebie, freebie, let's do a freebie. This is by Kyori Ibatakori um, and this is from their Facebook. That's where I found it. I'll have a little look and see if I can find it elsewhere just in case any of you aren't on Facebook. But this is their freebie design. So it's basically three squares or three um, pictures, a boot, a witch and a pumpkin house, all with this beautiful design around the outside. Now, again, if you're playing the Michelle drinking game, I think this would look lovely as a drum, <laughs> but I think it also looks lovely like that. So I will put the freebie down below. Right, what else have I got? I'm gonna pause just a second because I need to bring it closer. I've, I've reached the end of my arm span. Before I do haul, one thing I'd forgotten, I finally got round to drawing the name of the person or people, because I had two of these to give away, who have won the Samplers and Stitches Halloween at the Tower. So if you remember, the first time we tried to do the competition, we had some scumbag hackers. And then the second time I tried to do the competition, I left it for two weeks, which would have been last week. So it's actually been three weeks since we did the proper competition. <laughs> um, and so this is from, as I said, Samples and Stitches, Carol, who gave me two of these to give away. The winners 
were Laura Coleman so Laura I will make a comment on your comment and then if you could get in touch with me either by email or DM me on Instagram and then the second winner and I said, Julie, I had something else for you. It was Julie Horn. So congratulations, Julie. If you can get in touch with me as well, then I will get uh, Ruthie from Crow, uh, Ruthie from Crow Street and Carol from Samplers and Stitches to send you your charts. Congratulations. I really want to start that one. One of the pieces of fabric that I've got in my mind that I want to dye would actually be perfect for that. So I may very well start that. Okay, what else have I got? So we're on, we are on to horn now. This came through in the last couple of weeks, which is from Teresa Koga. It's her Patreon sampler, the Mystery Sal. And I've started it on a piece of fabric that I dyed myself. But as you can see, I have not kept up with the sampler. That's where I've got to. So I may actually come down and do that tree in that little fruit basket because that looks like a lot of fun. That looks like a lot of fun. So that's where I've got to. What else have I got? Now, where did I just put that? I should have included this in Stitchy Kindness, but it got into the wrong pile. As I told you, I have all this stuff, just not very well organised today. So this was Stitchy Kindness for me, but it might be haul for you. This is from Crow's Feet Stitching, Happy Halloween, a design by Ruthie Taylor. So that's her most recent one. I did see a couple of people stitching this at the um, retreat, actually. But isn't that lovely? That I think I might put onto the same fabric as my magpie. I think that would look nice on that. So sorry, that should have gone in the Stitchy Kindness pile. I had the last but one of my Year in the Woods, which I have not kept up with, um, the beaver. And I have seen the last one. And I can't for the life of me remember what it is. It's the last of the winter one. I'll put I'll put a picture of it up there actually because that means that next week we can draw our winners for the competition that I launched about 10 months ago for a piece of hand dyed fabric which was to try and guess all of the different animals that would feature so yeah you'll know before, <laughs> before I do because I can't remember at the moment I've seen it but I can't remember it um so yeah I've got one more to get and then I've got them all I've got all the threads and I've got no excuse it's beautiful, it's beautiful. I'm gonna leave that right to the end in case you don't wanna see, because I have another fox and rabbit delivery. It doesn't see, I tell you what, the time is going so quickly, it doesn't even seem like five minutes since the last one came. But it's beautiful, again. I have, oh, let's do this one first, because then I can move it out of the way. I picked this up, a metal sleigh. I thought it would look so cute with little, hal uh, no, don't put Halloween finishes in it, Michelle. Put Christmas finishes in it and then it will look better. Christmas finishes in it. I got this from Home Bargains for the princely sum of £4.99, pence, I think. But it's a really good size. Really, really good size. So there's that. I bought some fabric for finishing, which I will show you. Now, the first few pieces I got from an eBay seller and I'm going to put the eBay seller in the description box because I was really really pleased with their service and they had such nice fabrics um, and they were really well priced as well. So this is the first one that I got. Is that the right way up? Yeah. So there's that one. I'll try and tell you what they are if I've got the salvage to do so. Uh, Twilight by uh, Beth and Janine for Dashwood Studios. So I love that one. I did wonder. Oh no, I wanted to frame that one. If I don't frame it, maybe that might be the backing for it. 
I, I picked up this one and again if I can tell you what it is I will but I may not have the salvage Haunted Village by Colour Principles for Henry Glass so this is lots of Halloween bottles and things like that on the shelves and I thought that a small portion of that would make a nice backing for a Halloween stitch or it might become a project bag if I decide to make another project bag. I bought this one and I don't think I've got any salvage on this one. Pumpkins um, for the Plum Street Samplers stocking that I am stitching at the moment. The, what's it called? I'll put a picture up. I have so much ed editing to do tonight. Um, so I thought that might make a nice backing for that. Maybe. Although, I'm not sure it's going to be long enough, the piece I've got. I might have to get a longer piece. Because the pattern runs horizontally rather than the other way. Which, if I'd have thought about it, I would have realised. Then I picked up some of this. Again, I haven't got a salvage on this one. I can tell you what it is. There's um, one actually of Rebel Stitches that I like, um, which has got a quote on it. It says, may, may you arrive at heaven half uh, an hour before the devil knows you're dead. And I think that would make a great backing for that because it's got a coffin with a skeleton on it. Um, so I may have to get that one. Then I picked up this one. This one, I have got a salvage. It is Haunted Village by Colour Principle for Henry Glass. So it's got all these really cool houses on. And don't we just love stitching haunted houses? And then this one, which I think is my favourite. which I haven't got a salvage on. <laughs> that one. Again, haunted houses, love a haunted house. And then I bought some more fabric. I told you I've been left unattended for too long. Now this is Teresa Kogut fabric. And I can't, again, I can't remember offhand where I got it from, but I will put it across the bottom where it came from and then I'll put the link down below. So there's this one. So this is Riley Blake, but it's Teresa Koga. It's called Stitchy Birds. And this comes in several different colourways and I've got the blue one in this one. It's got all these cool things on it. Have I actually got that upside down? Oh, there we go. You just can't get the stars, can you? So it says, stitching is the highlight of my day. Whips, stitch to your heart's content. Sampler stitcher. Now I think you've pretty much got charts on this one as well. Because I pretty much think that I could stitch sampler stitcher from that. And then use this as a little finish with it. We shall see. And then I got this one which obviously it's the same that's just part of the same range it doesn't have a separate name so i've got the blue one of this one the darker blue it says time to stitch on it but it's got like the skein and the stalk scissors and the tomato pin, pin cushion and the folk hand that teresa's is teresa's symbol yeah and then i bought this one in the red Actually, I'm going to unfold this one a little bit more because there's more, it's a less repetitive one. There's more to see on this one. So you've got the blue bird, you've got the sewing machine, you've got the black bird there. Now, she has done charts for her Patreon, which are very similar to some of these things. So I can't wait to actually go back through and dig them out and maybe make some beautiful cushions out of those. Now I've got two more things to show you. 
I'm going to leave the fox and rabbit fabric right till the very end just in case you've got it on the way because they were posted out on Friday they got posted out on Friday so they should be on their way to you but we've had some more postal strikes so you might have already had them they'll be coming in the next few days so if you don't want to see then you just I'll say cheerio after this bit um I um, bought another sampler I've got another one on the way as well um, this one I just really liked. Now, I think the girl's name is Jessie K. Hilton. It was sold as Jessie K. Milton, but now I've got it in hand and I can see um, letters which are definitely M's and letters which are definitely H's. I think she's Jessie K. Milton. And I haven't done much looking up of her, but I would say she's probably Scottish. And I was drawn to these fancy, fancy letters here and this love heart. If I can find out who she is, then I think I'll be able to work out a lot of her family from here. And there is two letters here, but they're in such pale blue that you can't see them. A little tree. Now, in this light, I'm going to have a job of working it out, what it says on the bottom. And I've not had it long enough to really stare at it. So when I show you it again, I will tell you what it says on the bottom. But it's a long, thin one. And it put me in great mind. I think the two would make good companion pieces of the one that I showed you a couple of weeks ago, which was uh, Janet Drummond. Janet Drummond. And I've just been, found one more piece of wool. <laughs> two more pieces of wool. Two more. Two more. Good grief. <laughs> right. Two more. I bought a frame. It's the most beautiful frame I've ever seen. Look at that. It's a wooden frame. But it's just it looks like ripples. It's amazing. Can I get a can I get a screenshot? Oh my god, I look a bit crazy. There we go. So beautiful. So beautiful. <laughs> and then the last thing I bought, I, I'd forgotten about it until I looked down to pick up that other sampler. Now, there is a fabulous fabric shop near us called Annie Washbrooks. And she had a very big shop um, at her house, actually, in lots of kind of little huts in her house. It sounds weird, but it was amazing. Um, and they are moving out of there and have been for three or four years probably into another more a unit style place and so back at her house she's had lots and lots of sales and they are finally in the last two weeks of the sale so I went and had a look today managed to get a piece of foam to repair one of my uh, sofa cushions that Ness has managed to destroy by jumping on it apparently it's a trampoline so I've got some foam to fix that. And I got this for a fiver. And it is just filled with plain fabrics. They're like a kind of cross between like a velvety and a suede finish. But there's probably I don't know, 50 of them. And each one, I think, would make a lovely back for a little cushion, a little pin cushion, something like that. So a fiver? Yes, please. That's it. That's my haul, except for the fox and rabbit. So if you don't want to see these two colours, then I will say cheerio to you, and I will see you next week. Stay classy, Stitches. If you do want to see... And I will show you now. So the neutral one this this month is called Yellow Clay and I get a 36 count and it is just a very pale yellowy cream. It's lovely. It's going to be a perfect sampler colour. Perfect, perfect. 
and the coloured one, if you're in the coloured um, fabric club, this one is called Rose Garden. And it is a beautiful, beautiful pink. Beautiful pink. And that really is me. Apologies for the chaos. <laughs> this is why I don't go two weeks between videos. I'll see you next week. Stay classy, Stitchers.